Another thing I have to do while I have this engine off, because it's easier, you see this black dot I have there. I need to drill a, I think it's an inch and a half or maybe a two inch hole there for the cabin heat. I have the Zenith cabin heat kit and it comes with these wraps that go around the muffler, the tube and then just various things like this. So this will get mounted on the outside of the firewall and that's what the, this uh, scat tube will go into. And on the inside we have the one with the butterfly valve. So that gets mounted just like this with the firewall in between. And to cut this out, I have, I just bought this on Amazon. I think it was like $50. And I have a couple of these, but the ones I have are only like an inch. So they're a lot smaller than what I need. But what this does is once you drill a, a pilot hole this size here, which I don't know, might be a half inch, you basically just screw these two together and it just squeezes and you got these uh, cutting edges right here. See that? They just cut you a nice perfect hole in the firewall. So here's how this works. This one's an inch and a half. So this would be the size I need for this right here. And if you've never seen these before, you just have a, a female part and a male part. So you, you drill the hole in the firewall, so now the firewall is in between here. And you just, you screw this together and it just drives this in like that and gives you a nice perfect punch out for your hole. So that's what I've got to do in the firewall so that I can mount these and the cabin heat. You know what, I think I've changed my mind. Where that black dot is, you can see this, this gets mounted right here and then that scat tube gets connected on there. And I put that mark in there when I had the engine on. So that must, be where I, that must be where I thought was the best place for it. But now that I look at this, I'm thinking, why can't I mount it down here? Having it lower here would probably be a more direct route to the shroud on the muffler. So now I'm second guessing my location there. I might have just put it here just because it's a big open real estate on the firewall. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until the engine is put back on the airplane and the exhaust is installed and then revisit this little guy here. It'll be a little bit tighter to, to cut that hole with the engine on, but there's still plenty of room in there to do it. I can even do it from the back side here. Uh, there's plenty of room back there for that punch. So, yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pack this away for now and revisit this later. Well, here's what I'm doing, guys. I need time to think about what I'm going to, going to do with these uh, baffles because they're, they're not even close to fitting on here. I might have to just make pamper, paper templates and then come up with my own baffles. I thought about buying a baffle kit from Vans but I was looking at theirs and it's just, it's so completely different. I'm not even sure if it would work on here. But what I'm going to do is I've hooked up this uh, cherry picker or engine hoist. And I'm going to move this engine from this table to the other table because I have this table set up to build my uh, leading edge slats. That's gonna require a couple people because of the way these get folded over. But I'm gonna move this engine over to the other workbench because I'm not gonna do anything with this right now. But I wanna get something done, so maybe I'll start working on the uh, slats. So here we go. This is that foam piece I mentioned on the last video. This is what the, the engine was shipped in, and I'm glad I saved it because it does make a nice little cradle to, to uh, put the engine in. All right, now we just roll this bad boy over here. And we'll see if there's enough room to get it on the, in between the two workbenches. Ooh. Oh, you know the other thing I have to do too, and I've been kind of waiting to do this, so when I have the engine uh, on the hoist, is I have to take off these plastic covers they have on the exhaust ports because the cylinders are filled with the, with the preservation fluid and all that has to be drained out. 
And I figure it'd be nice to do on here because I can open those up and then tilt the engine to, to get it all to drain out. So I have to do that yet too. That goes in there just like this. And I want to move this in a little bit more. Right about there. And I will try to slowly lower it down here. Whoa. Hey, there we go. Perfect. All right, that works. Now with that off the table, I can bring my slats here. I have two of them. I'll get rid of this one and put it somewhere for now. Floor is a good place, right? I'll never step on that. What could go wrong? Now this has, this has to be rolled over. That's kind of really hard to do. And it definitely needs a, a couple more sets of hands on here. So I'll have to wait till Gordon and Brian can come over and help, but this is something I can get done and painted and bolted onto the wing. Now fast forward a few days and I'm going to show you all the other little projects that I have going on. Right here you can see that I do have the inboard leading edge slat temporarily attached to the wing and I just got done attaching this wing tip. I'm really happy with how this turned out it looks really good the trickiest part is on the back back here and this will take a little finesse to get that to look good but it is a uh, clique code there i haven't drilled the holes on the bottom just because i can't get to it uh, with the slat attached i'll wait till i remove the slat but uh now i'm going to do that side this is what the little wing tip looks like when it comes from the factory this is the side I just did. And the way I cut this out was I used my little hobby saw and I just sliced right around the bottom like that all the way around. I do have a link in the description box below for Amazon if you guys are looking for something like that. It works really well. In fact, I have two of them and I'm not sure you'll be able to see, but this one is just a little coarser than this one. So this is the one I'm using to do the initial cut on there. Now I'm just kind of using some coarse sandpaper here to clean up the edges. Now, if you look at this, it's not a, a very nice cut. You can see there's a lot of unevenness to it. And that's okay because I purposely cut it long. I'm probably gonna wind up cutting at least another quarter inch off of here. But here's, this is what I did on the last one to get a nice line all around it. So even though it's a, a little bit of an uneven line, it's even pretty much that it, it doesn't sit like this or like this, it sits pretty flat. So what I wanna to do to get a consistent line all the way around there is I'm just gonna take my pen and just draw a line around it. And 
And now that at least gets a pretty even line. I can trim it along that line. Then I'll have a nice flat surface. And if this is anything like the other one, once I do that, I'll probably still have to take another eighth of an inch or so off. Now what I'm going to do, because it's hard to get the scissors or the shears around here, I'm going to slice this off with a Dremel. And um, I use a, the lowest speed I can because I don't, I wanna melt this as least amount of I can, that I can. I think Dremel actually makes a, a bit here that looks kind of like a circular saw. And that would probably be a pretty good way to do this. I don't have one of those though. So I just kind of make do with what I have. So I'm using this little cutoff wheel here and I'm gonna go as slow as I can. It'll still melt it a little bit, but. Need a little more juice in there. There we go, that is cut off. And you can just kind of go and wipe off the, the little melted part that's around there. And this does make an absolute mess. So in between trimmings here, I just like to vacuum this up so it doesn't get tracked everywhere. Next step is I'll take a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. Now that we have a, a real nice flat edge to this, uh, it's nice and even, we can kind of carefully sand it down. And it's, it's hard to go like this because this will want to flex and bend. I just kind of found it easiest to just kind of pull it in one direction. That looks pretty decent. You can even take a sanding block like this. just kind of finish it off that way. Now I know that I'm probably going to, I'm not going to spend too much time with this because I know that I'm probably going to have to cut more of this off, but that's good for now just to test fit it. Can you guys see on here this little bump right there? That happens when this is vacuum formed and what I'm going to do is take the sanding block and just smooth out this corner. A lot of this will get cut away anyway, but that looks good for now. Now I'm just going to put it on the wing just as an initial fit and just to get an idea of where we're at and how much more I might have to trim away. Well, that was kind of just like I figured. We're gonna have to do the whole process over again. We're gonna trim some more off. Now, if you're building a Super Duty, you'll have access to the kind of the builder's instructions and photos online from Zenith. And if you go to that page, you'll notice they have some photos on building the slats and these wing tips or slat tips. <laughs> but one of the things you're gonna have to do is cut a little diagonal off the end of that. And uh, they show you kind of just using some tin snips. And again, I just did it with my little saw. I just cut off a, a corner and it's kind of just a guesstimate of how much to cut off. I'd recommend cutting off less than you think you're going to and then cutting more and more off or sanding down to where you actually need it. Now we're gonna put it back in and I know it's not going to fit because there's one more step I have to do but I just wanna see how close we are. So you'll notice I'm able to get the front in and you can see the white in the hole but in the back here it's still not going to go in there because the diameter of this plastic is larger than the slat. There's really no good way to get that on camera, but this has to be squeezed in to go in there and you have to melt the plastic to do that. Well, maybe melt the plastic is not the best word to use, but you have to soften it. 
And this is really tricky, and I think I got really lucky on the first one I did because I didn't screw it up. But you don't want to melt this to the point to where it deforms. You just want to soften it enough to where you can pinch it, and then when it cools, it will you know, retain the new shape. So here's hoping I don't screw this one up. It's hard to tell exactly how warm to make it, but we'll just start to pinch it there a little bit. Now this is the point where you transform into being an airplane builder to an artiste, because getting this back end to fit in there and look good is just a matter of trimming and sanding and trimming and sanding and repeating and repeating until you get it. So this is all ready to go. All I have to do, just like the other side, is drill these holes and put some Clecos in. So this side is done. All right, we now have both sides done. Well, in this video, I was going to show you some of the other little projects that I have going on, like with the baffling and the outboard slats. Um, but it turned into me just finishing up this other uh, little slat tip. So that's what we did on this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Hopefully maybe I gave you some tips or tricks. There's four of them you'll have to do. So far I did two, so I have two more chances to screw up again. I'm sure it'll happen. Well guys, happy 2024. This is January 1st, the very first day of the year, the first video of the year. I hope to put out a whole bunch more videos and I really hope to start making flying videos with the Super Duty this year. That's my goal, but I don't know. There's so much to do yet and there's so much that I just have to figure out that it might be a pipe dream. But hopefully this is the year that you finish your airplane and start flying or this could be the year that you finally decide to buy a kit and start your own airplane building adventure.